In this lesson, we're looking at extending on our understanding with factorials and permutations, specifically looking at calculation and algebraic skills. So as we'll start with the zero factorial. We'll look at conversions into factorial form and permutation for form from general form. And then we'll look at simplifying permutations, including algebra. And then finally, we'll look at solving equations, including factorials or permutations. So when we look at the zero factorial, the easy understanding is that zero factorial is equal to one. Now the proof of that is rather simple. That is, we know, we know that n factorial is equal to n multiplied by n take one factorial. And so therefore n will be equivalent to n factorial over n take one factorial. And when n is equal to one, we can see that 1 is equal to 1 factorial over 1 take 1 factorial. And so we have 1 is equal to 1 factorial over 0 factorial. If we isolate 0 factorial, then we end up with 0 factorial is equal to 1 factorial over 1, which is 1 over 1, and therefore 0 factorial is equal to 1. So pretty easy for us to see. Essentially, we just have to remember that zero factorial is equal to one. Okay, so the second thing we're looking at is conversion into factorial and permutation form. And this again is rather simple. So pretty much what we're looking at is going backwards. So looking at n multiplied by n take one, multiplied by n take two, and so on down to one, can be rewritten as n factorial which can also be written as NPN. All right, so some simple examples here. If we want to write the following in factorial form, then we can look at three by two by one being three factorial, which is equal to three P three. We can look at five by four, or which is the same as having five by four by three factorial over 3 factorial. So essentially what we're looking at here is we've got 5 factorial over 3 factorial. And we haven't changed the value because we multiplied top and bottom by the same value, by the same amount. And so that's the same as having 5 factorial on 5 take 2 factorial. And therefore we have 5p2. Hopefully that makes sense. We could say 10 by 9 by 8 is the same as 10 by 9 by 8 by 7 factorial over 7 factorial. So multiply top and bottom by 7 factorial, which is the same as 10 factorial on 7 factorial. And that is 10 factorial over 10 take 3 factorial, which is 10 P3. Now if we build in algebraic terms here, let's say we're looking at n, n take 1. We can say this is n, n take 1, and then n take 2, so 1 less factorial over n take 2 factorial. And therefore, this will be n factorial over n take 2 factorial. Here it's pretty easy to see that n is n and r is 2, so it is n p two. If we made it a little bit more complex, and let's say we're looking at n take two, n take three, then we can take the same approach. And that is we've got n take two, n take three, and then n take four factorial over n take four factorial. So this is n take two, factorial over n take 4 factorial. And hopefully we can see here that it's n take 2 on top. And so that means it needs to be n take 2 and then take another 2 factorial, which means we have n take 2 p 2. Okay, so just making sure that this one here is in that form, whatever the 
n value on top is, so this is n and this is r. Okay, so that allows us to simplify into factorial and permutation form, uh, whatever is required, and involve in algebra as well. And so now we're going to look at the last skill. We're going to look at solving equations, including factorials and permutations. But before we look at that, we're going to look at simplifying. So we can see here, we're looking at simplifying factorials and permutations, including algebra. So if we look at, start simple at NP1, and that's the same as having n factorial over n take 1 factorial. Now the reality is that we can simplify this more. So on top we can say this is n multiplied by n take 1 factorial and on the bottom we've got our n take 1 factorial. So n 1 less than n and so on and this is a common value on top and bottom so it's easy to see that n p 1 is equal to n. If we wanted to look at NP2, we can say that that is N factorial over N take 2 factorial. So we need to expand the numerator out until we get our N take 2 factorial. So N multiplied by N take 1 multiplied by N take 2 factorial over N take 2 factorial. And so therefore NP2 is equivalent to n n take 1. If we had something like n take 2 p 2, and we can see that this will be n take 2 factorial over n take 2 take r, which is 2 factorial. And so that is, we're looking at n take 2 factorial over n take 4 factorial. So our process should be, starting at n take 2, we'll continue down, so n take 3 is the next one, then n take 4 until we've got that common value to cancel. And once we've got that, we've got our simplified form. So I envisage that that will take a little bit of time to work out. It's going to be really important when we start looking at solving and proofs involving permutations and later on combinations. Okay, so when it comes to solving, it's like normal. What we're trying to do is isolate the variable. Okay, in order to do this, we must first simplify and remove any factorials. Okay, so we'll look at our first example. So we're, what we're looking at in this first example is n take 4 factorial over n take 5 factorials equal to 1. Now, the first step is we want to simplify. So we want to have a look at this left-hand equation and see what we can do with that. So on this left-hand equation, we've got n take 4. And if we expand that out, it becomes n take 5 factorial over n take 5 factorial. So the idea is that we've got a common factorial on top and bottom. Once we've done that, it can cancel, and we end up with n take 4 is equal to 1, which means n is equal to 1 plus 4, which is 5. So if we put that back in just to test it, hopefully we can see that we've then got 5 take 4 factorial over 5 take 5 factorial is equal to 1. So that is our 1 factorial over 0 factorial is equal to 1. Nice and simple there, um, we can see that that is true. In the second example, we're looking to find n if 7 times n p3 is equal to 6 times n plus 1 p3. So 7 times n p3 is equal to 6 times n plus 1 p3. So let's go through our processes here. We've got 7 multiplied by n factorial over n take 3 factorial. And we've got 6 times n plus 1 factorial over n plus 1 take 3 factorial. So we've got 7 multiplied by n, n take 1, 
n take 2 and then n take 3 factorial all over n take 3 factorial where hopefully you can see the n take 3 factorials cancel on the other side we've got 6 times n plus 1 uh, 1 less than n plus 1 is n n take 1 and then n take 2 factorial now I'll stop there because when we simplify the bottom 1 take 3 is n take 2 factorial so we can cancel again now this simplifies down to 7 n n minus 1 n minus 2 and we're equivalent to 6 n plus 1 n n take 1 so when we look at what cancels here n take 1 is common to both sides n is common to both sides and we're left with 7 lots of n take 2 is equivalent to 6 lots of n plus 1 so it means we've got 7 n take 14 is equal to 6 n plus 6 subtract 6 n from both sides and we've got n take 14 is equal to 6 add 14 and we end up with n is equal to 20 so there it is as our solution n is equal to 20 so there's some more complex processes involved with permutations and factorials. Obviously all of this will take practice and this is starting to build into more complex applications and algebraic fluency with factorials and permutations. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Some questions will be set that will allow you to continue to uh, progress through these skills while still practicing what was covered in the previous lesson. Alright, thank you for listening.